Welcome back to Flawed Off-Road. I'm Dan and I'm going to show you how to bore out your Dana 60 spindles to accept 35 spline axle shafts and we're going to do it with a hole saw. So when I got this thing, it came with Yukon chromoly axle shafts and a spool. I assumed that if somebody spent that kind of money, it was 35 spline. Well, it wasn't, it was 30. Well, meanwhile, I installed an ox locker that was 35 spline, and that's what I wanted anyway. On these late 70s Fords, this one's a 78. Some of them are bored big enough, some of them aren't. Mine was 1.4, the axle was 1.5 inches. So I have to bore this out. Now, Yukon sells a tool, it's about 500 bucks, and it hooks on the end of your drill, and it has a really cool bit on it, and all this and that. Well, for one, it's really expensive, but the more I read into it, the more I saw people saying, they doled out the bit and the bit itself is like two or three hundred dollars so if you burn one up then you gotta buy even more so the idea of boring out a dana 60 spindle is nothing new i mean if you do a search on it most of the stuff that comes up is 10 11 12 13 years old but for now i'm gonna assume you have a dana 60 you're wanting it bored that's why you're watching this video so first i gotta give credit to where credit is due this is where I got this idea from RC Man on Nextja. And basically, it's using a hole saw on an Oops Arbor inside of another hole saw. According to this, it takes a really long time and you end up with a bigger bore. And if you want to take expansion reamers, you can smooth it out a little bit. So your options for doing this at home are either shell out 500 bucks for the Yukon tool, which I've heard a lot of people say this bit gets really dull and they end up having to finish with a hole saw anyway. Or you can just save some money up front and try it this way, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to do this. So what we have here is an Oops Arbor with a one and three eighths hole saw screwed onto it. And now this takes the place of the drill bit that would typically be in the center of here. So what this does is the orange one goes inside and it's a real tight fit. It actually has to shave its way in there a little bit. It acts as a locator to keep this one where it needs to be. Now this one is one and nine sixteenths. The spindle is about that deep. So it's a long way to go. So in addition to this, I also have a 12 inch extension, which you don't need it now, but eventually once this starts sinking its way in there, you need this to get through. For my oil, I actually opted for this stuff. It's called Lubricut, but what it is, it's a cutting paste instead of an oil. I'm sure you can get away with whatever. Pull this out of there every so often and you can just kind of spin the drill right on the edge and put more on there. And I was keeping this coated and I've actually got some inside of there as well. Now I also recommend a nice drill that's variable speed because you don't want to be turning a whole lot of RPMs. I don't have a number for you, but nice and slow and easy. And the other big thing is keeping the drill level. Now this thing does a decent job of locating your whole rig, but there is there's some play in there. So ideally, if you have a drill with a built-in level, that would be great. And also make sure your axle is level too. That's why I have the jack on the other side lifting up a hair. Let's get this put together and let's get started. I thought I heard somebody say 400 RPMs was okay. I don't know. I'm just going to do what feels right. Usually you can tell if you're drilling too fast. You get tons of excessive smoke. You can see that it's building up too much heat. And the last thing we want to do is wear these teeth out that far into the hole. I also decided to go ahead and put the extension on there. That way, as I'm getting ready to line this up, and periodically I can stick a level on here. There's definitely a good bit of play. Even when you're all the way sunken in at the hole, there's quite a bit of wiggle. So this will at least give me a good indication of where I need to start. And I'm going to be drilling this in bursts of, you know, 30 to 45 seconds at a time. Pull it out, clear the chips, re-lubricate it, let it cool down, repeat. So this should keep me a little straighter than just trying to eyeball it.
So you can see after about two sessions of 45 seconds of cutting, I have not made it very far into this at all. Maybe at most an eighth of an inch. Um, but I'm trying to just take it slow. I only have two of these hole saws right now and I'm trying not to burn them up too quick. Okay, so we're gonna stop and we're just gonna clear some of this crap off of here. And peek at a cut. I am 242 thousandths so far and I'm gonna check that against the top just to give me an indication on if I've been going straight or not. <laughs> So if you take a look in here, you can see it's starting to do a decent job. That line that you see further in there, that's where the, um, the orange inner saw is just kind of grazing its way through. Last night, I spent about two hours on drilling this thing, and this is not for the impatient. This takes a long time. I probably total only about an hour of actual drill time, and you know, every minute or so, I'd pull it out, clear the chips, re lubricate the blade, all that stuff. I would touch it, make sure it's not getting too hot, and actually, it was pretty cool to touch for the most part. So, as you can see, this is about how deep I got. So from the end of the yellow hole saw to there, which doesn't seem like a lot, but it's, I'm gonna estimate that I'm about halfway through it right now. I made a note to keep checking the level of this and so far it's turned out pretty good. Now, sometimes it was leaving the chips, like the whole, the, the inner part that wasn't being cut and it was bottoming out in my saw. So I kept having to get in there with pliers and peel them out. You can see here's a couple of the pieces I'm talking about. Here's a big one that I got out. So other than that, stopping my progress every once in a while, those aren't the easiest to get out of there. This is going okay, but it's definitely gonna take a lot of time, a lot of patience. But hopefully my bits last. And so far this one actually still seems pretty sharp. It doesn't seem like it's wearing out at all. It's still cutting. Anyway, I guess it's time to get back at it. Okay, I want to show you what I was talking about, about those chips that don't clear, because the way this is cutting, it's leaving a sliver in there and it stays attached to the inside of the spindle. So you can see there's a big old piece of it hanging down and that's because I took a pry bar and bent it down so that I can try to grab it with pliers and twist it and rip it out of there. Because what happens is it basically goes in between these two saws and it gets down to here and bottoms out in the main cutting saw and then you can't cut any farther so you have to find a way to clear them out of there we'll see what we can do with it god i feel like i'm about to break these pliers you kind of got to just get it to tear this is the worst one yet So this is a royal pain in the ass getting these things out of there, but you gotta do it. It's not I can drill about another inch until I have to do it again. So I'm 
deal with these pieces in here. Originally, I was just peeling them out of their pliers, but now I'm so deep in there, I can't get to them. And so I came up with an idea. <laughs> I don't know if it's gonna work. This is my old 20-year-old Dremel and a little baby cutoff wheel, and I'm hoping I can just get in there and zip that thing off of there so I can continue drilling. We'll see how it works. This shit is fucking annoying, but I can continue on now. At least I have a method, too. So even though it's hard as hell to see, this worked. Oh, baby. Let me tell you something. This is not for the weak of arm or the lack of patience type people. Holy cow. There it is. Let's take a look at how it turned out. It's full of freaking metal shavings. Now I do have a rag stuffed in there, but it ended up having to get pushed out the back, so. I'm gonna have fun cleaning all this metal out of here. I've been using magnets and rags and whatever, but my God, that was a pain in the ass, but it saved me a shitload of money. So I'm gonna get it cleaned up and I'm gonna do the other side and then I'm gonna laugh my way to the bank or something like that. Yeah, this cost, I wanna say I spent about 60 bucks or so on the materials I needed to do this, which was the Oops Arbor, the, the three hole saws, the Arbor, in the extension bit. It's all in all, pretty cheap. Let's take a look at how it turned out. So there it is. It looks really rough, but I mean, you can feel some of those ridges, but for the most part, it's actually pretty smooth. Now you can take an expansion reamer if you have one and turn it up a little bit and hand ream this out and smooth this out a lot better. And that was actually outlined in that article that I showed you at the beginning of this video. I don't think I'm going to do that. I'm going to, when I get my shafts, I'm going to put them in here. I'm going to check for rubs and if everything clears, I'm going to fucking send it. I don't think it needs to look pretty. Nobody's ever going to fucking look at it. Now, as far as getting the rest of the shavings out, I had a rag way back in the axle tube. And I was able to hook onto it with my pick there. And when I pulled it out, I got a lot of goobers, but there's still a lot more. So I've been working with this little magnet. I'm gonna get a stronger magnet and try to get like as much as possible out of there. And then there's actually a hole in the axle tube that's drilled and tapped for the vent. And I'm gonna try to stick some quarter inch air line down in there and try to blast the shit out back toward me out the end of the axle tube. And hopefully that's enough. If I can still see shavings in there after all of that, I might jack the one side of the axle up and pour some thin oil or just rinse it with water, put a bucket right here to catch it and just try to flush the shit out the one end. And then when I do the other side, I'll have to do the same thing. Got to do what you got to do. You do not want all this sitting in your gear set. I can promise you that unless you like changing your bearings and your ring and pinion and all that. Well, anyway, I'm going to get busy on the other side and clean this mess up. Hopefully this was helpful to somebody out there, and if not, well, at least you watched this far. But yeah, subscribe to my channel to see more about this axle swap in this Jeep. I'm gonna be working on an M101 Army trailer soon. Thanks for watching Flawed Off-Road, and we'll see you in the next video.